If the season of Epiphany that just ended was all about God revealing God's self in Christ Jesus, the season of Lent is about that same revealed and incarnate God calling us back into relationship with him again and again and again. This season is about repentance and reconciliation. In the earliest days of the church, it was a final period of preparation for those who were seeking baptism. And a time when those who had been separated from the community for reasons of notorious sin would engage in their final preparations to be welcomed back into the fellowship of the church. An invitation to the disciplines of fasting, self-denial, almsgiving, and a greater attention to our own prayer lives has wisely been extended from those two groups to the whole church, acknowledging that each of us has fallen short of God's glory, of God's intentions for us, and that each and every one of us has a need to repent and to be reconciled to God. Each year, we begin our Lenten observance by putting on metaphorical sackcloth and literal ashes. As we acknowledge our sinfulness, we are reminded of our mortality. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. We will all leave this liturgy marked with a cross of ashes on our foreheads. And make no mistake, this mark is not one that indicates any sort of special piety. It's not a sign that says, I am particularly religious, especially today. Now, we all will leave this liturgy marked as mortal, marked as sinful, marked as broken, and people in need of healing. St. Paul encourages, no, he really exhorts the church in his letter to the Corinthians to be reconciled to God. And it's a big ask, a gargantuan task. And it's one that will end in failure if we try to do it on our own. Left to our own devices, we will be brought face to face with our brokenness, our limited nature, our inability to get it right time and time again. An endless repetition of falling flat on our face. One of the gifts I found that arises from the practice of Lenten disciplines is the fact that I fail at them as often as I do. It's an opportunity to mess up reset and try again. And I'll be perfectly honest, it's only in the last couple of years that I've been able to view this as a gift and not as a massive source of frustration. But it is a gift. And as comfortable as it is, the experience of falling short, confronting our own limited nature, is an essential part of the Christian life. But thanks be to God, that experience is not the whole of the Christian life. St. Paul goes on to remind us that for our sake, God made Jesus to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. In this we can take great comfort, my friends. We can take comfort in the knowledge that our perfection and righteousness relies not on our own work, but on the work that God in Christ has already accomplished. The work has been and is being done not by our failure-prone hands that are incapable of doing it, but by hands that are infinitely competent. Our call as followers of Jesus is to repent to turn towards the one who has already reconciled us with God. Our call is to live into the work that Christ has done for us on the cross. Because it is by that work 
that our marks of ashes are covered by the marks and wounds on Jesus' hands and feet. Our liturgies help us to see this and allow us to experience this day after day, week after week, year after year. We begin both this season and this liturgy being marked as in desperate need of Jesus' healing and reconciliation, but neither the Lenten season nor our Ash Wednesday liturgy allow us to stay there. That doesn't get to be the last word. Both this day and this whole season have a trajectory, and it is essential that we take that trajectory into account when we think about them. Lent makes no sense whatsoever separated from Holy Week and Easter Day, separated from its inevitable conclusion and in our celebration of Christ's victory over sin and death. The Ash Wednesday liturgy similarly culminates in our celebration of the Eucharist, itself a proclamation of and a participation in the Easter feast. We begin both by marking ourselves as mortal, as broken, as sinners. And we will leave with the assurance that in Christ's resurrection, those marks have been covered and that the only mark, the only identity that matters in the end is the identity that we have found in Christ crucified and risen. In his book about the season of Lent, Alexander Schmemann, an Orthodox priest and theologian, reminds his readers that each year, Lent and Easter are once again the rediscovery and recovery by us of what we are made through our own baptismal death and resurrection. And that as we begin to make the first step into the bright sadness of Lent, we see far, far away the destination, the joy of Easter, the entrance into the glory of the kingdom. And it is this vision, the foretaste of Easter, that makes Lent's sadness bright and our Lenten effort a spiritual spring. The night may be dark and long, but all along the way a mysterious and radiant dawn seems to shine on the horizon. This liturgy may start with our putting on ashes, with our reminding ourselves of our mortality, but it culminates in our participation in the mysteries of Christ's body and blood. Though sinful, we are not without help, and though we are mortal, we are not without the hope of the resurrection. And it is in the mysteries of Easter, of holy baptism, and holy communion that we find again and again that true identity. This day we acknowledge once again before God who we are, so that we might be reminded and shown who we have been made to be and indelibly marked as by the grace and work of Christ Jesus.